What is up, Ellen Nerds, and welcome back to the Dapper Snapper Gaming Channel, and welcome back to How Do I Want to Do This? This is our series where we take a look at all playable options available to players in Dungeons & Dragons 5th Edition, and then we rank them on a scale of 1 to 10, and either build them or fix them depending on how they rank. Now, this week we are finishing up talking about the Twilight Domain Cleric, and this was our second 10 out of 10 subclass. It did really well. If you missed the video earlier this week talking about the subclass in detail, make sure that you check that video out first. That'll be up in the icon above for you right there. But today we're going to be building one together and I hope you guys are looking forward to it. Uh, we're doing something that uh, I haven't done on the channel in a really long time and I think you guys are in for a treat. Make sure to leave a like on the video and subscribe if you haven't already. Our 1000 subscriber special is coming up very, very soon here in just a couple of weeks and I'm very much looking forward to that. But in the meantime, if you're not subscribed you could help us out and go ahead and subscribe help us start towards 2000 as you can see most people who watch the channel are not subscribed so what are you waiting on come on let's help us grow let's help us to reach our goals here and uh, I really appreciate all of you and of course once you've done that click the bell so you're notified whenever new videos are uploaded and share the video with your friends so the Twilight Cleric along with the Peace Domain Cleric have taken the coveted 10 out of 10 spot and yeah they are they're very strong they are very very good uh they take the cleric kit and just enhance it in so many meaningful ways that i just can't give it anything lower than and pretty much a perfect score yes it has a couple of flaws here and there but they are minor and um it, it really just kind of gets gets the job done you know it does really really well so we're gonna build one together we're gonna do it in a really fun way and this week we're actually doing just a straight build for once no multi-classing I normally multi-class almost all of my builds just for the fun of it but this week I decided we're just doing a straight build and honestly I think you're gonna have a better time with it that way let's see what I've chosen to do so let's jump into the build and we are gonna start off with our race as always and we're going with something a little different, I guess. Um, the thing is, at level one for Cleric, we are going to be getting free dark vision, right? So we don't have to necessarily take a race that gets dark vision, which is good. That, that means that we kind of open up our options here. Um, as some of you are probably thinking, just take Variant Human. Um, and actually, I am going to take Human but not Variant Human. Uh, I know Variant Human is very tempting because of her free feet, but I actually am going to have more use in a different human, and this one is the Mark of Handling Variant Human. Now, this does come from the Eberron book, and some DMs do not allow this, so make sure to talk to your DM before you just present this at the table. Some don't like the human that has an expanded spell list. Some think it's too strong. That is totally up to your DM, whatever you want to do. Uh, if your DM does not like this, we'll talk about it in the honorable mentions, but basically we'll have to change the entire build, uh, because this build kind of relies on us getting a particular spell which we'll talk about here in just a second um, but yeah make sure to talk to your DM before just doing this because they may or may not allow this um, so with this we get a plus two to wisdom and plus one to any other that's perfect for us of course in Tasha's you can move this around um, but basically this gives us a lot of like druid like qualities which is really cool uh, because originally this build was a variant human actually just regular variant human and had some druid levels in it in order to pick up some certain things uh, but you know, honestly, with this race, I can just forego those levels and I'm good with just a straight cleric build. So this this really helps a lot, right? So we get several things as a mark of handling human. We get wild intuition, which gives us a D4 added to any animal handling or nature checks, which is really great, right? Uh, that'll definitely come up during exploration. Um, and then we can also cast animal friendship or speak with animals once without using material components, which is also pretty cool. We can do that once per day. Uh, and then we also can cast animal friendship or speak with animals on monstrosities once we get to level three. That's also pretty cool and definitely makes those spells a lot better than they were before. Um, it does have to have an intelligence of, of four or higher, but I mean, that's fine right a lot of the time you're going to be okay in that restriction um, there will be a few exceptions but for the most part you'll be fine they'll have at least a four so you should be fine but all of those are our minor buffs at least in the grand scheme of things uh what we are looking for though is the expanded spell list for this race and there is a particular spell that we get on this spell list, um, and I'll show you right here what the spell list is. Uh, I'll give you just like two seconds to figure out what it is that we are looking for on this spell list. Do you see it? 
Do you see it right there? Yeah, conjure animals. We get conjure animals on this on this race, which makes this race kind of cracked. Uh, it, it makes it really strong. Um, we'll talk about it a lot more later on. Um, we also get Awaken, which is a pretty great spell. It is very costly though to cast. You do have to have a lot of, of money's worth of material components, so just be careful of that going in. Um, but, you know, it, it is what it is. Uh, but there's some really good stuff here, and, and it, it's some really nice spells, but Conjure Animals is going to be the main draw for this race. As far as stats go, of course, we are going with our modified standard array as always. Of course, if you're taking point by regular standard array, rolled stats, some other method, then you may have to adjust these numbers uh, as, as you go. Um, of course, you know, every table does it a little bit differently. So this is what I use at my table. This is what a lot of other YouTubers use at their table. Um, and this is just what I use. But if you use point by or some other system, you'll just have to adapt in order to uh, get as close to this as you can. Basically for this build, we just need to prioritize wisdom and then constitution and then the rest we don't really care about kind of dexterity um, just for armor class, but we're not gonna really be worrying about using a weapon, which is strange because we get the martial weapon proficiency and we get heavy armor proficiency. I'm using neither on this build, mainly because one, martial weapons don't really get a whole lot of boosts in this, you know, you get the Divine Strike at level 8, but besides that, we don't really get any other really meaningful boosts to our weapon attacks, and so it doesn't really seem worth it to take all this, to take this weapon, um, not have a free hand, uh, and, you know, just kind of gum up our, our system here. Um, where we could just, you know, have a free hand, have a shield in one hand, and, and then we're good. Uh, the other reason I'm not taking heavy armor is because the comments hate when I take heavy armor. Uh, I'm not going to have enough strength in order to wear it, so I would have to uh, suffer a 10-foot movement speed penalty, and, you know, it is what it is. So, you can take medium armor here. If you want to take heavy armor, you do you, but I'm just going to take medium armor here uh, because... There you go, because the comments told me to. Um, so eventually, you know, we'll work up to half plate, do what you gotta do. So for our stats, 17 wisdom, 15 constitution, 13 dex, 12 charisma, 10 strength, eight intelligence. Of course, you can move around those bottom three stats however you want. You really don't need them. So for point by, just focus on your wisdom and constitution with dexterity being the, the final one that you actually kind of focus on dump the rest don't need them uh, as far as our plus two we'll put that in wisdom and our plus one we'll put into dexterity actually um, and we're going to leave an odd number constitution we will come back to that later as far as equipment goes of course take scale mail or if you can get a breastplate those are really expensive though uh, but scale mail is good to start with of course work towards half plate whenever you can um, a shield and take a blanket like a really thick blanket uh, you'll see why later um, but just have have a way to you know, suck your thumb without anybody seeing it, and then we'll uh, we'll we'll come back to this here in a few levels. So, let's start taking some levels here. At level one, it's gonna be really weird for me to not say cleric one because I'm so used to saying cleric one, cleric two, and then like druid one. It's it's so strange for me to not be multiclassing on a build, but it's good. It's good for me to uh, to diversify what I've got here on the channel. So at level one, we get spell casting, and of course we get three other things, which is just insane. Uh, we get bonus proficiencies, eyes of night, and vigilant blessing. All of these are fantastic. So of course we get dark vision. We can share it. Uh, we also can just you know go early on our on our initiative because we want to. Uh, it, it's pretty fantastic. And then the bonus proficiencies we're not using, unfortunately. As far as cantrips go on this one. Just the standards, you know, Guidance, Sacred Flame, Spare the Dying, Thaumaturgy, Toll the Dead, just the usuals, right? Nothing crazy there. As far as first level spells, we get four that come already prepared. Two from our race and two from our subclass. So we're going to have a ton of spells. It's going to be great. So from our race, we get Animal Friendship and Speak with Animals. Remember, we can cast one or the other of those once per day without material components. And then the rest of the time, we could use spell slots to cast them. Um, and then we also get Fairy Fire and Sleep from our subclass, which are both great. Uh, here at level one, Sleep is a fantastic spell. It does fall off as you go. Um, you know, once you start hitting level like six, seven, you probably can just retire it and never use it again just because the, the hit points just don't scale properly. And so up casting it really isn't worth it so you know up to up to like five or six it's great 
after that, meh. Uh, but I would probably focus more on Fairy Fire here than anything. That's a really good use of your concentration here, as well as some of the other picks that you could take here. Bless, Cure Wounds, Detect Magic, Guiding Bolt, Healing Word, Inflict Wounds, Sanctuary, Shield of Faith. Any of those are all fantastic spells. I know you're probably not going to take all of them, but that's a good list of just options to weigh for yourself on your build, whatever fits your flavor. I'm not here to tell you how to play the character, at least role-playing wise, because I think any subclass can be played really in really, really meaningful, awesome ways. And as far as a character, I'm just here for the mechanical side. As level two, we get our channel divinity, of course, and Twilight Sanctuary comes online here. This is going to be the main use of our channel divinity. Um, usually I say, you know, it'll be 50-50 with this, and of course getting your spell slots back with Harness Divine Power. Uh, it's going to be hard to not want to do this over Harness Divine Power because this is just so good. Your 30, uh, 30 foot aura giving the temp HP and getting rid of Charm and Frighten, it's just really fantastic, right? I mean, this is basically a high level Paladin feature that is just right just here at level two. I mean, it's kind of insane, right? It, it's really, really good. Yes, it's limited in use where Paladin is not, but still right to get it this early is still fantastic um and then at third level we get no features but we do get second level spells we get beast sense and calm emotions from our race and then moonbeam and see invisibility from our class moonbeam is a great use of our concentration here if you want to however you can do fairy fire and spiritual weapon that's probably a better use of your concentration obviously you can't cast both in the same turn but you could set up one or the other, you know, set up spiritual weapon and cast a cantrip. And then next turn you could set up fairy fire, whatever you want to do. Um, that's really cool. Um, and, but moonbeam is nice, right? It's just a really limited range. Um, so it's very flavorful. Use it if you want to over spiritual weapon. Um, I prefer spiritual weapon personally, just because I like the force damage, but that's just me. We, of course, then also get Aid, Hold Person, Lesser Restoration, Prayer of Healing, and Silence. All really, really good options here. At level 4, we get our first ASI or Feat. And I'm going to take Resilient Constitution. We are not multiclassing here, so I'm not going to get a chance to get proficiency in Constitution saving throws. Except from here, we are going to be concentrating on something pretty much non-stop in combat. And so I want to make sure that we are dropping that the least amount possible, right? We're going to be cranking our constitution. We're going to be getting our proficiency bonus added on. We're going to be doing the best that we can in order to make that what we want it to. And of course, this also gives us a plus one. So we are now at a 19 wisdom and a 16 constitution, which is not bad at all. Plus three, plus our uh, proficiency bonus. That's great, right? That's a really, really good bonus here at level four. At level five, we get destroy undead up to a CR one half. So if you face a undead, you use your turn undead as your uh, channel divinity, then they are destroyed, which is cool. Probably not gonna happen because, you know, we're probably not using that option for our channel divinity. Probably just a, you get completely surrounded by undead and that's how you have to do it. Uh, but most of the time we're gonna stick with our aura and not use that anyway. Um, but we also get third level spells and here's where we have to pause for just a little bit because here's where the build kind of takes off, right? Um, so we get two spells here from our race and two from our class, of course, like every level so far. Um, and so we get Beacon of Hope and Conjure Animals from our race. We'll be back to that. Uh, we also get Aura Vitality and Lehman's Tiny Hut from our subclass. You could also take things like Dispel Magic, Mass Healing Word, Revivify, the, the likes of those. Okay, Conjure Animals. Conjure Animals is a spell that uh, is one that uh, gets banned at a lot of tables um, or gets heavily modified or gets ruled differently by different DMs. So I want to talk just a minute because this spell is so useful to this build. This build can get out of hand very quickly. Uh, the damage that can be dealt with this spell can go crazy way too quickly, right? Um, and there there are some issues with this, um, and, and we'll talk about that here in just a second. There are weaknesses with this, but overall, you're gonna be doing a lot of damage using this spell. 
So here's the description for it in case you weren't aware of what it does. Uh, you probably are though because this is a very famous spell for what it can do. Um, so basically you can you know, you can choose amongst a range of options here of CR2, one CR2 creature, up to eight CR1 quarter creatures, which, spoiler alert, that's the option we are going for. Um, having eight creatures is usually going to be better than having one, even if the CR is different. Um, there's there's not a whole lot that you can do to, to really add up uh, the damage with one creature that you can with eight just it's just going to stack up a lot easier that way um and so what we're going to do is you can choose eight cr one quarter creatures and so there are a lot of options here right um there, there are a lot of really good options the top contenders at least in my book are the elk the giant poisonous snake the giant owl you know so if you need to fly somewhere and you need to have your party move really quickly you could do it that way so that's probably less combat more outside of combat um the Dionychus actually is pretty good. That's a dinosaur, in case your DM will allow you to do that. Um, and then the Deep Rothe is actually a really good one. It's actually technically slightly better than the Elk. Um, so a Rothe is this like yak thing, and then the Deep Rothe is like the baby version. Uh, and so, yeah, the Deep Rothe is really, really nice. It, it basically ha is just an Elk, but plus one to its strength, but one higher strength. Um, so it, it works exactly the same way as the Elk does. Um, the thing is, there's there's one distinction that I'm sure you've seen in this spell description, and that it is you choose the category, and technically rules is written, the DM chooses what creatures are conjured. You don't technically choose those. Now, a lot of DMs, when they allow this spell, will allow the player to choose the creatures. You need to talk to your DM on how he or she is going to rule this because that makes a big difference in whether or not this build is going to work out well for you because your DM could choose some just crap creature and you're just stuck, right? And, and you've got this really bad thing. I mean, I mean, you've got eight attacks coming in, right? It's hard to be really truly bad, but you're not as optimized as you could be, right? And so it makes it hard. So talk to your DM, make sure that your DM will allow you to choose what it is that you want to summon and that will make, uh, that will make this a lot easier. Here's the thing, these summons still will work with your aura. So set up your aura the turn before and then conjure animals. So you wanna conjure these where they have 20 foot of movement speed if these have the charge, so like the elk or the deep rothe, uh, and where they can run 20 feet in and use their attack because then they do an extra 2d6 damage, which is fantastic. And the thing about having eight of these things is that covers basically every direction right you've got you on one side and then they are on all the other sides which is fantastic and they can run up then when it comes to an opportunity attack either you can try to take it yourself or you can just sacrifice one of them and there you go you move on and you've got more meat shields to back up and do more damage on their turn and yeah this can get annoying now Obviously, there are weaknesses to this. Number one, we are not a shepherd druid, so these are not going to be magical attacks. So once you get to a creature that deals with attacks that resistant to non-magical attacks, your damage is going to come down quite a bit. If they're immune to non-magical bludgeoning, piercing, slashing, whatever your creature does, then you're out of luck and you've got to go with something different. We've got a ton of options. You know, this build isn't necessarily like the, the whole crux of it re relies on this. It, it's not that way, but it is a big part of something that you can do that is really, really, really powerful, especially here at low level. So definitely consider it. If you have any questions about the spell, let me know in the comments down below, Twitter, on uh, on Discord, anything like that, all that's in the description. At Cleric 6, of course, we get Channel Divinity twice per day, just in time. We're gonna be using that to buff our summons here, and so that's fantastic. We also use it to buff our allies as well, uh, and we can now use that twice per day, which is great. We also get Steps of Night. Here's where the blanket comes in. Th this is such cheese, but technically rules is written as long as you are in dim light then you can gain a flying speed equal to your walking speed and so you just hide under your blanket for you know a couple seconds and then you can fly uh so it's it's really cheesy but technically rules is written it works talk to your dm before you do it uh but i mean rules is written it's there rules is intended probably not but yeah, you can do that. There you go. You can fly. Uh, at Cleric 7, no features, but we do get 4th level spells. We get Aura of Life and Dominate Beast, as well as Greater in Invisibility. We did have a little bit of uh, a double up there, so only 3 spells instead of 4. Uh, and then, of course, Banishment and Freedom of Movement are great options as well.
At Cleric 8, of course, we get an ASI or a feat here, and we're gonna go with one more feat, and it's gonna be a half feat. We're gonna take Telekinetic, and so this is going to give us a plus one to our Wisdom, which is great, so now we are maxed out. Of course, if you used a different stat method, then you may not be quite maxed out yet. Keep working on it, you'll get there. Uh, so we get to do a few things with this. We get the Mage Hand Cantrip, which we did not have before, which is great. We can also make it invisible, which I think is really on brand for us uh, and then we also can do a telekinetic shove which is great uh, so they have to make a save if they don't want to be moved or you can willingly move people around this can be used in a variety of ways especially since we have this aura up right if you've got somebody who couldn't quite make it to the aura or they're battling just outside the aura and they really want those temp hp you can move them into the aura that not only gets them out of the range of the opponent but it also gives them temp hp and so that can be really really handy you can also get one of your summons out of melee range with something um, or you could try to move it in a more favorable position whatever whatever you need to do uh, it's very versatile what you can do with this feat and I think it works fantastically we also get destroy and dead up to a CR1 like I said probably not using this all that often but it's there um, and then of course divine strike here helping to add on to our weapon damage which we don't have Talk to your DM about, and I know I've, I've said talk to your DM a lot during this during this build. Uh, talk to your DM about switching this to potent spellcasting because it really makes way more sense for potent spellcasting on this subclass. I get why they did it. They gave you the uh, the weapon proficiency, but honestly, on this type of a build, you're better off just doing cantrips. And so, just ask for potent spellcasting, and you're going to get a lot more mileage out of it that way. Um, if they don't do that, then you're just kind of out an eighth level feature, unfortunately. At level nine, we don't get any features, but we do, of course, get more spells. So we get Awaken, Circle of Power, and Mislead here, as well as things like Greater Restoration and Mass Cure Wounds, uh, which is pretty great. And also, now that we have a fifth level slot, we can upcast our Conjure Animals. Uh, Conjure Animals does have to be upcast by two levels in order to scale, uh, but, you know, here we are. And so now we can have 16 of those animals, uh, and they, uh, they can just run rampant and go absolutely crazy with it it's it's really really fun to be able to just cause so much chaos on the battlefield it's really cool obviously um you know a fireball is not very good uh and i'm sure your dm will bring a lot of aoe stuff and that'll wipe a lot of them out at once but you know it'll work most of the time and it'll be a lot of fun to uh, to be able to do that at level 10, we get Divine Intervention, which of course is a trait that I'm not the biggest fan of, uh, just because it does happen so rarely. If you missed our Cleric video that talks about all of the Cleric, uh, just regular features of the regular Cleric, uh, that is up in the icon right above for you right there as well, so you can check that out if you missed it. At right, Cleric 11, there I go again saying Cleric instead of just level 11. Uh, Destroy Undead it goes up to a CR2. Again, probably not using all that much, but if you need it, it's there. Um, and then of course for six level spells, Harm, Heal, Hero's Feast, Sunbeam, all really, really cool. Sunbeam is less on flavor just because, you know, we are a Twilight Cleric, but if you want to uh, reflavor that, I'm sure your DM will let you. At Cleric 12, we get, of course, another ASI or Feet. I'm just going to bump Constitution up to an 18 right now. Um, so this is going to help us again with our Constitution saving throws to make sure that we don't lose our little animal friends. Uh, then at Cleric 13, no features, but 7th level spells. So Firestorm, Regenerate, Resurrection, Symbol, all fantastic and when we cast conjure animals at this level we can have 24 of those cr one quarter creatures which is amazingly powerful at level 14 of course we get our destroy undead up to a cr3 which is great um then we get at cleric 15 no features but we get eighth level spells pick your favorites i mean it's an eighth level spell it's gonna be really powerful no matter what you do um and then cleric 16 of course another asi or feat I would just go ahead and max out Constitution here and just have all the hit points, all the concentration. It's you're just you're in a really good spot as far as maintaining everything that you're wanting to do. Uh, Cleric 17, of course, destroy undead up to a CR4 and Twilight Shroud. So now all of your creatures not only get all of the uh, benefits of Frighten, Charm, and also of getting all of the temporary HP, which is a good chunk of temp HP right now. They also have half cover, which is always good right uh, for our creatures the ac is really low so it's probably not gonna make a huge difference but for your other pcs that could be kind of insane right uh it could could be really really good uh and then finally we also get ninth level spells and pick your favorites whatever you want there's 
you know, it, it's all fantastic. Uh, and of course, we could use our ninth level spell slot to upcast conjure animals and have 32 CR one quarter creatures. And um, yeah, that's just kind of crazy. Uh, at cleric 18, we of course get channel divinity three times per day. At cleric 19, we get to choose another feat or ASI. I'm good on the ASIs, really, so I'm just going to take the tough feat because I can and just take a bunch of extra HP because it helps basically any character to have a bunch of extra HP. And then finally, Cleric 20, level 20, Divine Intervention Improvement, where we can use Divine Intervention and it actually will work for a change. So that is our build for today. I'm sure you guys actually enjoyed that because it was a straight build, no multi-classing for once. Uh, so I hope you guys liked that. Um, and then of course, we're gonna talk about our honorable mentions briefly. Um, there were a couple of builds that I went through before this, but um, I, I really wanted to do something to really make use of our of our our shroud of our aura around us that we get at level two. Um, we get so much good stuff out of that that you know, I really couldn't go with an option that didn't have some kind of like dedicated summoning ability. Of course, you could take something like summon celestial or, or something like that. But honestly, I don't think it's as powerful as the lower level spell. And so I would much prefer to conjure animals and go from there. And of course, we got it from this race. So it just kind of worked out. And I really like what we ended up with. If you can't take that race, that's fine. Um, you wouldn't be building around conjure animals, but you could do it around another summon spell that you get. You don't get a lot, but there are a few and it would be something, right? It, it would definitely help out. Um, but we could also take things like the Furbolg. The Furbolg, of course, is a fantastic cleric race uh, just because, you know, we get the invisibility once per day, which is good. Um, and a few other things that Furbolgs can really do well. And of course, also the new Kobold is really good out of Monsters of the Multiverse. Yes, it doesn't have pack tactics. However, it has its little cry. And so you could cast Conjure Animals on your action and then bonus action cry. And then all of your animals have advantage. And so that way you don't have to worry about them failing the strength saving throw to knock prone. You can just attack them normally anyway. And yeah, it, yeah, the, most things are not going to survive a round or two of that. It's just going to be absolutely ridiculous. Um, as far as other classes that I could have taken here, Fighter was the original go-to. Uh, one or two levels of Fighter. Uh, proficiency in con saves, so didn't have to waste a feed on that. Uh, action Surge, of course, being able to cast more than one spell in a turn would have been good. Um, and the defense fighting style, all would have been really, really nice brings here. There's a lot that Fighter gets in level one that would have been really handy. Um, and then actually Wizard would have been a really good option as well, specifically the War Mage Wizard. There's a lot of really good buffing abilities that you get that allow you to tank and really be okay up in the front line from the War Mage Wizard. And so I honestly would really think that's a really nice two level dip. I don't think you really need a whole lot more than that. There's a lot of really great spells on the wizard spell list that don't really need your intelligence to be very high. And so you could just make that your 13, take two levels of it um, and pick up things like shield and some other things. And then of course you get your fantastic defensive features that that gets as well. As far as feats go finally, uh, Warcaster, of course, but we had a free hand during this build, so didn't really need it all that much. Uh, it would have been nice to have it for opportunity attacks because we really didn't have anything to smack opponents with for opportunity attacks. But you know, it, it is what it is. I, I couldn't really fit it in on this build. Uh, I guess I technically could have but I wanted to get to that 20 con first and then by the time you're at level 19 Warcaster is just kind of late it's really late to take Warcaster but tough is really good of course right before level 20 if you're going that high so it, you just get a lot more mileage out of that and the last two levels um, and then also uh, Fate Touched would have been really nice for some really really nice mobility you could have also taken something like Silvery Barbs here uh, it would have it would have been nice and I know all the Silvery Barbs haters in the comments are going to let me know you don't want a cleric with it because that's insane and you would be correct but I don't care because uh, it's it's really good. Uh, of course, that is all for our honorable mentions. Next week, we are talking about the war domain, and then we are done with clerics for now. Uh, I'm sure we will be back very soon because we will be starting on homebrew very soon. Um, but next week is war domain. 
The week after that is our 1,000 subscriber special week. We're going to be doing a Blood Hunter build, as requested by you all, as well as our little podcast, and that is going to be going up in a couple of weeks. So I hope you guys are looking forward to that. Make sure to subscribe so you don't miss when that goes up. And of course, stay safe out there, stay healthy. We'll see you later. Bye-bye.